Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, welcome to St. Mary's Cathedral in Glasgow on this day when the Church proclaims the astonishing news that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. It is news that surprised disciples long ago when they met the risen Christ in the garden, on the road and by the seashore. It is news that inspires and transforms disciples still here in this city and across the whole world. Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed for us, so then let us keep the feast. For Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God, our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil for the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by the Holy Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. God of undying life, by your mighty hand you raised up Jesus from the grave and appointed him judge of the living and the dead. Bestow upon those baptized into his death the power flowing from his resurrection that we may proclaim near and far the pardon and peace you give us. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, firstborn from the dead, who lives and reigns with you now and always in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Hear the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Alleluia. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, 
they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed, but he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Lent has been long enough. This Lent particularly has been long enough. Just over a year ago we locked down in the middle of Lent and it feels as though that existence has been going on in one form or another ever since. Most people have embraced the need for the lockdown lives that we've been living and this itself is a miracle that we should not ignore. Collective altruistic action on such a mass scale to protect life and human flourishing is a miracle of no small stature. But Lent has still been long enough. We have known discipline in our lives from last year's Lent to this year's Lent like never before. And Lent has been long enough. One of the ways that I've learned to keep Holy Week is to look for resonances of the passion stories around me in life today. Back on the streets of Jerusalem, one of the stories of Holy Week that always troubles me is that it is the same crowd that cries Hosanna in the streets that goes on to cry crucify. This year it is the same society that clapped for carers in the streets that has been unable to agree decent pay and conditions for those whom they once applauded. Lent has been long enough. Back in Jerusalem, it is an out-of-town African, Simon of Cyrene, who carries the weight of the cross on Good Friday and then pretty much disappears from view. In our own times, black and ethnic minority people in our land have carried the weight of the corona pandemic in far more disproportionate numbers than they should ever have done. And that fact seems to be disappearing from view. And it's no help for a government report to claim that there is no structural racism in society when black and ethnic minority folk have been dying in greater numbers than everyone else. Indeed, that kind of claim is what structural racism looks like and sounds like. Lent has been long enough. Back in a garden close to Calvary, a stone is rolled in front of a tomb by a group far too small to have been the only mourners at Jesus' funeral. And dear God, have we known the tomb this year, and how we have known the pain of being banished from the sides of those whom we love, as they have lived and died and been buried. Lent has been long enough. But Lent in our tradition doesn't go on forever. It comes to an abrupt end with startling news, 
that Jesus Christ is risen from the grave. Death is not the end. All that we ever assumed is turned on its head. Jesus is alive and with us, and nothing will ever be the same again. The discovery of the resurrection on that first Easter day was hard to comprehend. It's hard to comprehend now. Yet for 2,000 years, Christians have proclaimed that death does not have the last word, that all that rots the human spirit is defeated, that new life is our heritage and our hope. New life is the new normal. The Easter proclamation means and has always meant that the old normal wasn't working. Something new, so very new, is here. And yes, you can feel and know that it is real in our own times too. The resurrection is proclaimed in the kindness of strangers, and there has been much of that this year. The resurrection is proclaimed in those searching for a new and sustainable way of living on this earth. The resurrection is proclaimed when those fighting for justice taste its sweetness. The new normal is faith and hope and joy and love. And it is all, yes, all that we need in our lives today. I see it when the flowers bloom from an earth that was frozen and hard and cold. I hear it in the song of the robin and the wren. I feel it as love wherever love is found. Jesus is risen from the grave. The old has passed. Lent has been long enough. New life, the new normal, is here. A year ago, I thought that as a congregation, we were in really serious trouble. How could we possibly survive being locked down and closed? As a congregation, we thrive on meeting new people every year and sharing with them the open, inclusive, and welcoming love of God that we proclaim in this place. I thought that we would be facing serious decline because no one would be turning up in lockdown. In fact, people have continued to turn up, online for some, in person for others. And there are people worshipping both online and in church this Easter who simply were not around last year. This is what I want to say to anyone who is discovering Jesus for the first time. Christians don't always get things right. We bumble along just like the first disciples, misunderstanding God, betraying the new life that we hope to live into, and we make a mess of all kinds of things. But we have met in Jesus Christ, someone who has changed us and whose message matters so much more than that. God loved us enough to want to join in with all the mess and the dirt of our world. In the person of Jesus, we get to know God with a human face. He shared all our sufferings and sorrows whilst he was with us on earth. All the reality of human struggle and human pain. And he is risen from the grave. From beyond the tomb, he calls us to live as new people, People for whom life is the new normal, love is the new normal, joy, goodness, and peace are the new normal. And nothing will ever be the same again. You want to know whether all this is true? Well, if Christ were not risen from the grave, we would not be gathered here, especially this year. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity, saying, Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow in the way. 
deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to play. We pray for all those in our thoughts and prayers at this time. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all those who have died. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Accept our prayers and be with us. A year ago, I wasn't sure that we would still be here this Easter. In fact, we are confidently proclaiming the joyful news of Easter in new ways, both in church and here online. The reason that we're able to do this is because of many gifts from many hands. If you would like to join those who support this ministry and make your own offering, then please go to thecathedral.org.uk for details of how to do so. Just click on Donate to St. Mary's Cathedral. And thank you for your gift. Let us present our offerings to the Lord. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, author of all being. Your power sustains, your love restores our broken world. You are unceasingly at work from chaos bringing order and filling emptiness with life. Christ, raised from the dead, proclaims the dawn of hope. He lives in us that we may walk in light. Your spirit is fire in us, your breath is power to purge our sin and warm our hearts to love. As children of your redeeming purpose, freed by him who burst from the tomb and opened the gate of life, we offer you our praise with angels and dark angels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Praise and thanksgiving be to you, Lord of all, for by the cross eternal life is ours and death is swallowed up in victory. In the first light of Easter, glory broke from the tomb and changed the women's sorrow into joy. From the garden the mystery dawned that he whom they had loved and lost is with us now in every place forever. 
making himself known in the breaking of the bread, speaking peace to the fearful disciples, welcoming weary fishermen on the shore, he renewed the promise of his presence and of new birth in the Spirit, who sets the seal of freedom on all your beloved children. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which slaves walked free. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. After supper he took the cup, he offered you thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by the Spirit's life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God is with us wherever we are. As we gaze in adoration, we feed on God in our hearts and minds, that we may in turn feed the world. O oh God, even as this broken bread was scattered over the hills and was gathered together and became one, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory and the power through Jesus Christ forever. Amen.
glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with new life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. My thanks go to everyone who's helped make the celebration of Holy Week happen at St. Mary's this year. If you're finding a way into this congregation, either online or in church, then please fill in a welcome card. You'll find it online at thecathedral.org.uk. And it's also possible to sign up there for weekly emails about what's coming up at St. Mary's Cathedral. Now, though, go and take the good news of Easter into the world, to the place where God has given you responsibility. Remember the peace and love we have celebrated, and do not fail to show to all people the new life that is already among us. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen those who fall. Support the weak and honour all life. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.